Hello, and welcome to How to Catholic, the only podcast that is being recorded at 1040 at night, or at least that is what my sources tell me. There may be others, and they may be coming after me when they find out that I'm here, but let's enjoy this podcast experience anyway. My name is Tony. I am the writer for the Catholic Badass blog, which you can find me at catholicbadass.blogspot.com. And I was sitting in front of the Blessed Sacrament one day, and I was thinking to myself, I should totally start a podcast. Because podcasting is a great way to get new ideas out to people and help other people share their opinions. If you're a writer, you can it's only your perspective usually that is going out to the audience. But with podcasting, you can have panels of people on and talk about anything you really want to talk about. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast. And hopefully, hopefully for the next one, it won't just be me. Because for now, I'm the only one here for this podcast right now. But my hope is for the future that we will be able to get more people onto the podcast and listen to what they have to say about being Catholic and about life in the Catholic world and all sorts of fun stuff, whatever we can talk about, because really it's just great to get together and talk with a bunch of Catholic people because we're all very cool people. So I have a couple things I wanted to bring up for this first podcast. The first one is redemption. I chose redemption because, again, I was sitting in front of the Blessed Sacrament A couple days ago, thinking, Lord, what should I talk about for this first podcast? And redemption popped into my mind. And it's probably due to an article that I read a couple days ago. It was an article about the wife of Robert Downey Jr. And it told a little bit of the story of Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr., you know, very awesome actor. He played Sherlock Holmes in the Sherlock Holmes movies. He was in Tropic Thunder. And most importantly, he was Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. got to play Tony Stark and be Iron Man. I remember back in 2008, I saw the first Iron Man film in theaters with my brother, and it blew me away. There was something just so amazing about seeing Downey playing this really awesome character. I had never really been an Iron Man fan before I saw that film, but after seeing it, I was a fan, and really all the films that Iron Man has been in, they're my favorite superhero movies. I love superhero movies, but movies like The Avengers and the original Iron Man movie, those are my top two favorite superhero movies of all time. They are just amazing. It's partially due to Robert Downey Jr. and his portrayal of Tony Stark. And it works because, really, Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. have so much in common. They are both stories of redemption. And we as Catholics, we believe that Christ died for our sins so that we could have a second chance and so that we could get into heaven, so that we would have the opportunity to go and praise God and be with God Jesus and God eternally. And really, Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark are both stories of redemption. Here's a little bit of history about both these people. Robert Downey Jr., in the 90s, he was making a pretty big splash as an actor. He got to play Charlie Chaplin in the movie Chaplin, and people thought, he is going places. Let's let's keep our eye on this guy. But then he sort of ran into some drug problems. He was arrested a couple times and ended up in rehab for a pretty long time. And when he got out, he was having a lot of trouble finding work. No one wanted to hire him. He had been a lot. He'd been a huge problem for a lot of people during his time uh, when before he went to rehab. But there was one guy who helped Robert Downey Jr. get into a movie. And though, you know, it was it was a pretty decent movie, but the impact that that movie made was that it helped show that Robert Downey Jr. could be worked with again, that he could be hired as an actor, and he went on to do several more films. 
Now that person that helped Robert Downey Jr., Mel Gibson. That's right, Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson, helped Robert Downey Jr. get back on his feet. And all he asked of him was that if he ever saw someone in his position, then Robert Downey Jr. should do everything he could to help him. That was his only thing he had to say about it. So, you know, I'm not a huge Mel Gibson fan, but hats off to him for helping Robert Downey Jr. Because really, if it wasn't, honestly, if it wasn't for Mel Gibson, we might not have Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man. And that is a very sad world to me because really it's, it's such a fantastic story and he's such a fantastic actor in those movies. And he's done so many good things ever since he has done those movies and gotten back onto his feet. Now, let's talk about Tony Stark, who has a kind of a similar tale. He's also a story of redemption. Now, Stan Lee created Tony Stark on a bet. He bet that he could create a character who would be hated by the people, but hated by the comic book fans, but they would grow to love him. He made this character so unbelievably easy to hate, but people loved him. Stanley wrote the original Iron Man series during the Vietnam War when people were against war. So to make people hate him, he made Tony Stark a warmonger. He was a man who profited off of war. And he made him an alcoholic. He made him a womanizer. These are not traits that you want to see in your heroes. But that was the original concept for Iron Man, for Tony Stark. In the story, like I said, Tony Stark was a warmonger. He was profiting off of the death of thousands of people. When he gets captured by a group of terrorists who want to use his weapons to hurt other people. And it's it really changes Tony Stark's heart and he sees all the evil that he's done in the world. And so he had a scientist who had been in prison with him and the scientist helped Tony Stark to build a original Iron Man suit of armor so that he could escape. And in the end, that scientist ended up giving his life so that Tony Stark could be free. And because of that man's sacrifice, he was able to go and save the world and stop the evils that he had at one point been a part of, the deaths of thousands of people. And as the story goes on, we find that Tony Stark still has his demons, but really that just shows the humanness of him, that he's still fighting and he's still trying to overcome the problems in his life, because really that's what we are like as well. No one is completely perfect. We all have our demons. We're all trying to fight back against some sort of problem in our life. And like I said before, these men are both stories of second chances. Someone gave them a second chance. Someone gave them an opportunity to go and do some good in the world, to make themselves better than what they were. And really, that's the power of Christ. Really, that's the power of God. God loves us. I've been reading a book belonging to one of my roommates called The Shack. And in the book, there's this one great moment where it's like, God is love. God loves us. God gives us second chances because he loves us. And honestly, if it wasn't for those second chances, I would I would be in a very bad situation because I screw up a lot. There are so many times where I have to go before God and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up really bad. Please forgive me. Please, I'll do anything. And and God, well, he doesn't say anything, but I can feel that he loves me. And I know that he has forgiven me for what I've done. And in response to that, I try and live a better life. It hasn't been easy. There's always struggles along the road to redemption, but... It's really how we handle those struggles that make us into better people. Just like Tony Stark, just like Robert Downey Jr. 
And with that, we're going to take a break in a few moments. But first, it's time for the How to Catholic joke of the day. I told this joke to my roommate a couple of nights ago, and she was laughing pretty hysterically at it. So here we go. (laughs) How to Catholic joke of the day. Why was the tomato red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Ha? Ha? Get it? Okay. She enjoys the corny ones. And with that, we're going to take a break. We will be right back with the How to Catholic podcast. And welcome back to the How to Catholic podcast. Again, my name is Tony. You can find me at catholicbadass.blogspot.com. And right now, I want to talk about something that is a little nerdy. I mean, we've been talking for the past 10 minutes about Tony Stark and Iron Man, but this is pretty nerdy. If you go to Comic-Con, you will find a a lot of people who enjoy the topic that I'm about to bring up. I'm about to talk about a show that I started watching last year. My roommate had the episodes for it, the first three seasons. And then this past year, I've been watching the most recent season until it ended a couple months ago. This show is Game of Thrones. And honestly, I have to say, it is a fantastic show, but there is a lot of bad stuff that goes on in this series. There is swearing, there is nudity, there is a extreme amount of violence and there's a lot of other bad stuff that is going on that good upstanding Catholics and Christians and everyday people would not normally be okay with. But here's the thing. It's still a really good show. I'll I'll talk more about that later, but first let's, let's talk about the actual series. A Game of Thrones is based off of a series of books called A Song of Ice and Fire, written by a man named George R. R. Martin. And the setting of the story takes place in a land called Westeros, where the various houses in the land continue to vie for power when the king of the land dies. And they try and fight their way to the coveted Iron Throne, which is the symbol of power in this land. And it's not an action-heavy show. Their action makes maybe makes like violence makes up maybe 20, 25 percent of the show. The rest of it, it's really a show of politics. It shows people scheming and plotting with one another to increase their lot in life. And really, it, it is a fantastic show. It's just that people have a tough time getting past all the bad stuff that's going on the show. I'm not defending it. I recognize there is bad things happening. And at first, I was a little uncomfortable with it. Okay, that's a lie. I was pretty uncomfortable with it. But if you after you get into a couple of the first episodes, you see just how interesting of a story it really is. I'm not saying that if you watch a show, just ignore the bad stuff, you know, Don't, just look past it. It's all fine. No, just, I recognize that it's there. And honestly, they could get rid of 80% of the bad stuff that's happening in the show. And it would still be as good as quality as a show as it is with all the bad stuff that is happening. But of course you have to recognize this is HBO. You know, this is a channel that people are paying to watch so they can pretty much do and say whatever they want because they don't have to hold themselves to certain standards that other free basic cable network shows have to deal with and i have to again i have to emphasize it's a good show but there is a lot of bad stuff going on there i've been reading a lot of catholic bloggers there are basically two camps of Catholic and Christian bloggers when they talk about the show. There's the camp that says this show is evil. There's bad stuff going on and all sorts of things that God would not approve of. Don't watch a show. Evil, evil, evil. And then the other ones who say, yes, we recognize there is a lot of bad stuff in the show, but 
there is some good things in the show as well. And as you probably guess, I'm with the latter camp saying that I recognize there's some bad things, but it is a good show. As I said before, it's a show about people vying for power. It's a show with great dialogue where people talk with one another. It's a show that really shows what goes on in people's minds. It's a show of psychology, really, where you find these people who are broken and they're trying to fix themselves by gaining more in life and trying to increase how much control they have over other people. The characters are just fantastic in this show. Peter Dinklage, who plays Terry in the show, he's probably one of the best characters for a TV show I've seen in my entire life. The fact they didn't win at the Emmys a couple weeks ago, it, it kind of irks me because this season he put so much work into Tyrion's character. I'm sorry, Peter Dinklage. I really hope you win next year. I'm Aaron Paul, who won. I'm sure you deserve all the success and everything and blah, 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 blah. But still. Now, this show isn't like... You would you might compare the show a little bit to J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And I love Lord of the Rings. I love The Hobbit. Hobbit is probably one of my favorite books of all time. But there are some major differences. Though Martin does say that Tolkien was a big influence to him. But there are some major differences. And what George R. R. Martin has to say, I actually agree with. And what he says is that while Tolkien chose to divide his characters, you have the goblins and the orcs who are obviously representations of bad and evil. And you can tell that because they're grotesque and they're ugly and they worship a giant evil-looking eye in the sky versus the humans and the elves and the dwarves who are all fair-skinned and fighting with a man who controls giant beams of light, can blind your enemies. Now, that's how George J.R. Tolkien writes his books. George R.R. Martin, on the other hand, he chose to go a different route. He chose to write characters who have good and evil inside of them. Some characters are just unbelievably evil in Game of Thrones. Like, there's no redemptive quality in them whatsoever. Others, they start out evil. They seem like terrible, terrible, terrible people. But over time, you find the humanity in them and you see the goodness in them. And then there are other characters who everyone in the Game of Thrones world that shun saying that that person is evil and that they're evil for no apparent reason other than the fact that they're different from others and they're actually good. Well, mostly good, but honestly, they're this character that I'm talking about, who people probably can guess who it is, he's better than most characters in the series. He has a real heart. But that's just the thing that really entertains me in Game of Thrones, is that you have these people who are trying to live lives and be good people, but they go about it doing terrible things. They try and live a life where they are in control, where they believe that power is the most important thing in the world. And they are willing to sacrifice sometimes everything they have in order to gain that power. And like I said, that's the real, that's the real amazing thing about Game of Thrones it's not the nudity, it's not all the bad stuff that is going on in Game of Thrones. It's the fact that we're watching people trying, people who are broke, we're watching people who are broken trying to repair themselves, trying any which way they can, thinking that they can somehow make themselves better after hurt that they have received because really everyone in game of thrones has experienced some loss in their life. It's just the way of the world that they live in. Many accept that they've lost others try and hide it. 
others try and fight against it. But everyone's broken. That's the real lesson that I'm getting from Game of Thrones is that really everyone in that world is broken and is just trying to find a way to fix themselves. At some point in the future, I want to have my friend Riley on and I want to hear his perspective. He was the one who really got me interested in Game of Thrones. I'd love to hear what he has to say about all this because I imagine he is a very different perspective than what I have. So hopefully we'll get him on the show. This will not be the end of our discussion about Game of Thrones. But I think it is time for me to say good night. Thank you for listening to the first How to Catholic podcast. And hopefully this will not be the last. I hope in uh, about a week or two get something rolling. But until then, thank you very much. God bless. Peace and love. Have a good night.